What's up on Pirate Ice Crew? Today's video, we're still continuing the Onboard Air Series. We're doing the belt. All right, y'all say, really, you're going to make a video dedicated just to put a belt on? Yes, I did. And I am. Or actually, I'm done with it because right there's a new belt. But uh, here's the deal. I kind of thought it was a drag and drop swab. Just, hey, let's go get another belt stick on it for a, um, no, a YJ with air conditioning. It wasn't quite that simple. And honestly, I learned something on this one. Uh, you know what? I ain't gonna go through all this crap. You guys will see it in the video. The wrist road. Now hold up a second before we get the video started. The video kind of starts out in a weird spot. Uh, it's showing me on rust bucket trying to figure out how hey, the pulley configuration stuff like that. Why? Because I was under the impression the only thing I had to do is go to the auto parts store and buy a belt for a YJ that had AC from the factory. I was wrong. There's actually another pulley, an idler pulley, that is brought into the equation. So, I had to figure all that mess out. So, everything that I had already shot was really irrelevant to put into it because it would just be more confusing than anything else. So, I just want to clarify that. Let's roll. Now, I'm using the front of rust bucket to figure out this pulley situation. And this pulley right here, don't know what it came off of. Dad had it up there and he said, hmm, this one might work. And actually, it does. But... And it had this centerpiece right here with it. And that's one thing, if you were to go buy a bearing, you probably won't get this as, you know, hey, I need a new idler pulley. So you may have to go salvage this from a junkyard someplace, off of, uh, maybe off the front of a Cherokee or Durango or some kind of uh, Chrysler product. But you want to take your bolt that, see, I pulled this bolt out of here. I took the bolt out of the front right here. Here, because this is where that pulley is going to mount alternator and just off to the side here is you, this bolt passes all the way through that front cover and it's got a nut on the back side 15 millimeter both ends so that is the bolt that's going to hold the pulley in place with one exception the bolt's going to be too short so i gotta go to the auto, uh, hardware store here in a minute so i can find the right size length bolt but you can use that boat right there to say, hey, you know, take it to the junkyard or pull one, uh, pull one out of a Cherokee or who knows what. <clears throat> but you can pull that boat right there out of the front of an engine, out of your YJ or whatever, and use it to go into a junkyard and say, hey, let's size up a pulley here. Now this particular pulley here, this idler pulley here, comes from the top right here. Right beside where your AC compressor would be. Does it work? Absolutely. So you could actually go get at the auto parts store a new uh, idler pulley for your YJ that fits here and use it down here. Like that. It's a little bit bigger than this bearing dad had. And, but does it really make a difference? Not really. But now put the YJ pulley back in place. And like I mentioned, that's the pulley that came from up here. You will need both of them. Because when you put, put your onboard air in here, the belt will come off the bottom of the pulley here, come up over the air compressor like that. So here's how the belt configuration will run whenever you have this pulley here in place. It'll come from, over, uh, from the uh, power steering pump. It'll come across the bottom of the pulley here. It'll come up over the compressor, the AC compressor. And then the back side of your belt will run along the uh, pulley here they come over the alternator here, then back down that way. So having this pulley in place gives you a better wrap around your alternator. Now, is it possible to come off the, off the uh, AC compressor here and come straight down here and down to the crank? Yes, it's possible, but here's the caveat to that. If you're running a high amp alternator, when your alternator kicks in and starts charging, it actually creates a resistance to the pulley. I mean, meaning the pulley becomes harder, harder to turn. So if you don't have enough wrap coming off the top of the AC compressor, then just barely, you know, get a, you only get about that much wrap on your pulley. Having only that much wrap, every time the alternator kicks in, you may get a little bit of belt squeal, and it may not charge as efficient as it should. So you really want to get that pulley put in place. So you'll come off that, like I said, you'll come from the power steering pump over there. You'll come over top of this. It'll come down. Back side of the belt will wrap this. It'll come over. Alternator, because you'll get wrapped from here to there. On the alternator by using that pulley you more than sufficient amount of wrap then it'll go on down to the crank and complete the rotation so at this point i gotta go to the uh hardware store 
and find me the proper size bolt to make that happen. Just got back from the hardware store and I was straight over to our true value because if there's anybody that's got some off the wall bolts, they're gonna have it and save me a lot of running. So these are M10s, 1.5s. This is 110 millimeter long, this is 120 millimeter long. And I've already test fitted these using you know, these uh, pulleys here. Honestly, I think the 100 would have been fine, the 100 uh, millimeter bolt, but hey, I'm gonna use the 110. I'll have a little extra thread. There's room for it back there, not a big deal. So here's my other situation. This pulley right here is the YJ, the factory YJ idler pulley that's right beside your AC compressor on top of your engine. This is the pulley that Dad gave me. I don't know what this one come off of, but as you can tell, it's considerably bit smaller. Will it work? Absolutely, it will definitely still work. But here's what it's going to create. The belt for using this pulley is going to be shorter than using the, for this pulley. This one's going to take a, this pulley right here will take a longer belt. So what I'll have to do is custom, I'll have to measure my belt length to see what size I need. That'll make a great video for you guys. Uh, putting this pulley in place, I cannot tell you that, hey, go in, go get a uh, serpentine belt for a YJ with air conditioning and power steering or whatever it is, you, whatever your options are. Will that work? I don't know. Because this pulley here, like I said, comes from the top of the engine. I don't know that the pulley that originally was right here, that's supposed to go here on an air conditioned rig, I don't know what diameter it is. I don't know if it's a big one or if it's a small one, so I don't know what to tell you to do with your belt. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use a small one simply because it works. This right here, this bearing's jammed up like crazy. I mean, it will not turn. So this is junk. And so whenever I fire a brush bucket, I'll have to get another pulley. So anyway, that's the one I'm gonna use with this bolt here, which is the M10 110 millimeter. So let's get her done. So the bolts are after is here's your alternator. And you can see I've got it partially pulled out right there. That's the bolt you're after. And the dead giveaway is if you look at the surface that it mates onto right here, it's like a machine embossment right there. That's where the pulley's gonna ride on that flat spot right there. Over here, I have to take a deep well and go way back up inside there to get to the nut to hold it, hold it while I turn the bolt. Sounds fun, doesn't it? Yep, it is. Now the next thing you gotta watch, when you put the new pulley in, you got to be sure it lines up correctly. Now let's take an eyeball look right down through here. Now somebody's gonna call me out. Yes, I know my alternator pulley has got one rib exposed here. And this right here is a alternator out of a Durango. So it's like a 135 amp. Durango's you run a seven rib pulley. YJ's run a six rib. So all thing you gotta do for running the Durango alternator with a seven rib is move your belt back one and you can use the factory pulley. Now back to the topic, if you look at the outer pulley, you can barely see it sticking out the front right there at that edge. It needs to be shimmed outward a little bit. So I'm going to get me a couple washers to push that pulley out a little bit to center the belt in the middle of the pulley. Okay, she's centered up a bit better. I'm using uh, two 3 8 washers, grade 8 3 8 washers. It's centered up much better, but we still got one little bit of an issue. Put my thumb on the end of the bolt, pressing it flat so it sets against the face like it's supposed to. But listen, hear that rubbing? The edge of the pulley is hitting right on the front, right here a little bit. So what do we got to do? I need to spray. I'm gonna throw one more three-inch washer behind it. I think I'm gonna have what I need to put it where it needs to be. Pull it out. You see, I got the two washers. I'm gonna add one more. Feed it back through. Right there. I'm holding my finger, pushing in on the bolt and turning it, spin it, spin it, spin it. It's free as it can be now. So okay, let's check a belt alignment. Here's the edge. The, you can see my thumb on the edge of the pulley, and I'm, I'm not looking through the viewfinder so I can actually see what's going on. Yeah, I'm centered real well. Actually, the wear mark that's in the 
pulley right here, I am like perfectly lined up with it. So if you don't have like a factory spacer that comes with some of these, you know, that's they don't come with a pulley, but they could come with the engine or whatever the case may be. If you don't have that spacer, you can use washers. But there's one little thing I want I pull I'll point out to you. Make sure you ain't knock my washers off. What you gotta be careful of when you're using washers, stacking them on the back of the bearings like this, you want to be sure that your washers small enough that you're not getting to the outer bearing here you want it to contact just that inner bearing part right there nothing nothing more so that is sitting on there just perfect like that see even though it does have a little bit of wobble room there that's not going to matter because that's going to be pressing against the casting of the front of the engine so if it's a little bit off centered it's not going to be kind of vibration issues because the bearing is what's do the bearing in here is going to be stationary this right here is spinning around the radius of this right here so if your washers are a little bit off centered no big deal as long as they're not touching out here okay out here no no inside yes you're good so now that we've got that established i need three washers I'm gonna bolt this baby in place. Okay, I've got it bolted in place. You can see it spins real good, but listen real close. Let me get the camera down close to it. Hear that bearing? Yep, this, this baby's bad. So I am about to run to the parts store and get another belt, I mean another uh, pulley. I'm actually gonna get the YJ pulley that goes up here. Where's the viewfinder? I can't see the viewfinder. Well, I can see the viewfinder, but I can't see where I'm at on the viewfinder. I'm actually gonna give me another one of these pulleys right here to put down there, so therefore I got matching pulleys. And if I ever want to, I can buy me an extra pulley and I'll have a spare for you, the top or bottom. So, yep, off to the auto parts I go. So I'm back from the auto parts store. Got gates number 38024. And this pulley here, this idler pulley, is the exact same pulley as this top one here because that larger diameter still has plenty enough room to replace that when it fit in like it should. Plus, I can have one of these in the Jeep as an extra. So if I ever get an idler pulley that goes bad anywhere, I'll have a, it'll fit either this position or that position down to either one. So having matching pulleys is always a good thing. So let's get that one swapped out. I also found it kind of cool that it came with the spacer right here too, that rides inside there. Most, I've seen oftentimes they did not come with that. And I got this at O'Reilly's. So if you guys got an O'Reilly's local, you'll know what, walk in and say, I need it. What part number was it? Walk in and say, I need part number 38042 to go on my Jeep. And I'm putting an onboard compressor on it. They're gonna go, do what but the manager there she knows me she know I'm always doing something weird so let's get it on so I got the pulley set in place and I went ahead and centered it up and right here remember those three ace washers one two of them worked with this but make sure you got plenty of them on hand because one you want to push the pulley out enough that it centers with inside the belt but you don't want it hitting the uh, engine as well so so pushing in on the bolt, spinning it, it feels nice and smooth. And it's not rubbing, hitting anything. And if you look right down the belt, got a little bit sticking out here, a little bit sticking out back there, so we're centered up good. Sweet. All right, get that nut put on, tighten her down. Okay, you can see we got plenty of space between the alternator and the idler, and let's spin it and listen. Just as quiet and smooth. A $30 pulley, it better be. Probably get cheaper on Amazon. I'll look at the part number on Amazon, see if it's cheaper there. So now all we gotta do is get that belt changed. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about the new bolt that I put in, the nut on the, the new nut I put on is a 15 millimeter. The front here is a 17 millimeter, so. But that may vary depending on where you get your bolts and stuff. So that is actually, that obviously is not a factory Jeep bolt. It's one I picked up at the hardware store. So you never know what you're getting. But it works. Okay, so 
when we go to change the belt, here's what I'm going to do. In normal circumstances, if I'm just going to change a fan belt and I'm not doing any kind of no modifications or anything like that, I don't even fool with that adjuster that's over on the power steering pump. I don't even mess with it because you can do this. You can loosen this bolt here. There's a nut on the back side. No, right there. I've got my finger on the back end of it right here. There's a nut back there, 15 millimeter. Here, 15 millimeter. And right there is a 15 millimeter. This one right here threads into a uh, bracket back here. This one right here, like I said, has a nut on the back end back there. So I loosen this one so it'll pivot. I take this one completely out, which allows the alternator to tip inward like that. That'll allow you to take that belt right off, no problems at all. Uh, you don't have to fool that cumbersome um, belt tensioner thing over there. But my dilemma here is that since I'm doing a mod, I'm not 100% sure on my belt length yet. And if it's too short, too long, whatever, I still may depend to fool with that over there. I got a belt for it said i'm not going to show you guys part number until i know it works so how about i ain't going to mention that belt until i know it works and when i find the combination that works it's when i tell you what size it is i don't want confusion on one so okay i'm going to swing that alternator in and pull that belt and try the other one see what happens okay we've got that top bolt loose where to pivot the bottom bolt you see it's almost all the way out and you can see i've got this little piece of channel right here a little small piece of channel stuck right in the top of the alternator. What I do is I'll take, put my shoulder on this right here. Let me flip it so you guys see what's up. See, I've got a position. Now all I gotta do is stand up a little bit. It flexes the alternator. And when I flex it, stand, I stand up and flex it a little bit. I take my other hand, and there's the bolt. And I screw it, take it right out. Then, I'll take turn the alternator loose. It'll pivot inward. Sit it back here. It'll pivot in and freeze the belt. But I need both hands now, so but you guys see what's up. You know, before I take that completely off, let's look at the routing of the belt so we don't have a dumb moment for getting, uh, which way does it go? I forgot, because I do that sometimes. I've even done it to this as many times as I've worked on it. Okay, we'll start with the alternator. It comes off, off the alternator this way, under the pulley, power steering pump, comes off the bottom of the power, come on, belt move, uh, fan move out of the way. Bottom of the power steering pump here, comes around the water pump, down, wraps all the way down. It goes down to the crank. Heck, I'll even go under show you guys. You see right there where it wraps off the water pump goes down like I say here, wraps around the crank this way, and shoots right back up to the alternator. So that is how our rotation works. When we go to put the new belt in, we'll include that pulley and of course the AC compressor. So what'll change is the routing right here will come up around the alternator, back around like this, go under that outer pulley, up around AC compressor, around AC compressor down into that outer pulley. And from, from the top side, that'll look like, from the crank, it'll come up around the alternator. It'll come down between your pulley here, around the pulley, up, over the AC compressor, down, under the idler pulley, and over to your power steering pump, then back around your water pump and down to the crank. Now, before I pull that belt completely off, I just looked down and saw something I wanted to point out to you. Look right there at the end of my finger. See that little thing right there? Had it sits right over top of the belt. When you feed the belt in, you have to kind of kick it at an angle and go under that. That's your timing mark down there. And that thing right there is all up in the way. If you don't go tip your belt back edge, go in like at an angle, that thing will hold your belt out and it'll cause you to go nuts trying to figure out what's going on. So take it under that and then wrap around everything. And there's why I didn't tell you the size of the belt. It is entirely way too long. <laughs> But you see the addition of the AC compressor, how the belt now comes under the pulley, over the AC compressor, down to the alternator, under the alternator, then around the pulley, and down to the crank. So, yep. 
so I'm going to do the old school trick and figure out how long of a belt do I need. Let me get this figured out and I'll be right back with you and I'll show you how I figured it out. So how do you measure for the proper belt length? Let's just go redneck style and I'll show you how it's done. Now looking here at the belt, 13 16 that's how wide. 96 and 3 quarter is the length of the belt. That is if you took your tape measure and run all the way along the surface of it and come all the way around the whole length of it, it's going to be 96 and 3 quarter inches. So 6 rib, 96 inch, and well I would say a 2 means 3 quarter, but eh, okay we'll just kind of go with that. So what have I done? See that piece of wire? I've got it run the way it needs to go. So let's go to the bottom where I started out. That's just the crank doesn't roll as free as all your pulleys up there do. I tape it to the crank and route the wire around all my pulleys. Outer pulley, alternator, goes up to the AC compressor, goes around under the outer pulley there, power steering pump over there, comes off the power steering pump, comes around the water pump, and back down, I don't turn the water pump, come back around and under the crank. So it's made its full revolution. Made its trip all the way around. So what do we do from here? Well, I've got it stuck right there right now holding it. Uh, pull this out, hopefully I don't mess it up because I can't use both hands holding the camera. All right, right there is the end of my wire. Let's take this wire and bend it really hard, make it hold a shape. That's gonna get us in the ballpark of where our belt needs to be. Now we pull the wire off, we'll measure the length. Now it does help as you run your wire around everything, tape it in place. Therefore, it doesn't fall off behind the pulley or something like that and cause you to have a you know, kind of hissy fit because it can be really aggravating to be down there and be completing the, the trip around everything to discover, oh my gosh, the wires that fell off behind this or whatever. So another little tip for you. All right, let's get that wire out and measure it. Right there, remember the hard bend that we put in the wire? Let's start our tape right there, tape measure. Put it right against that right there. Grip it right here. Pull the tape like this. Hold it. Make sure you hold onto the wire. Got it along the tape. Hold everything in place. A little bit further. See, we're about to the end of it. Then we get right here. We're looking at 89 inch belt. See my wire ends right there, it ends about right there. So we're looking at about 89 inch belt. So I'm gonna take this belt back to the auto parts store and ask for a belt, six rib, 89 inches, somewhere close in that ballpark. Oh, there's one more thing I need to uh, show you guys. Okay, remember alternator, we took this bolt loose to allow it to pivot and took that bolt out to push it in to get our belt off, remember that? Okay, so if you take and leave it like that, what's gonna happen? Your belt's gonna be too short. So put this back in position, and then do your wire trick go around everything get your measurement which is going to be like 80 like 89 inches and that's going to give you the length of your belt you can if you need to over here on your power steering pump do your uh, final adjustments on this because you've got the adjustment screw underneath the bottom of this that will tighten and tension tighten or loosen your belt however you need to let me correct myself on something. I told you guys oh, just a moment ago that I was going to go in and ask for an 89-inch belt. What I probably asked for is more of the lines of an 88 to 88 and a half, probably more like an 88 and a half, because of that uh, alternator swinging in like that. It's going to go in enough. It's going to give us enough uh, play, clearance, whatever, that using it like an 88 to 89 and a half inch belt, it's going to allow us to put that in place and stretch it some. Because you got to think that wires we wrapped around everything, it's not super tight. So therefore, that measurement of I've got 89 inches, I'll actually I'll probably pull it back to about 88. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go to the auto parts store. We're going to swap this belt for an 88 inch six rib, and we'll find out what happens. The manager down at the store, she's like super cool. She puts up with my stuff all the time. And here's the belt we settled with, 88 and 3 eighths. Honestly, I think it could have stood a bit a little bit longer, probably 88 and a half. 
but it worked. The reason I say that is I did end up taking the power steering pump and the belt tensioner under the power steering pump. I ran the pump way, way, way in before I could get the belt on. So once I did, we we're all good to go. So to summarize this up, get your belt K060878. It will work because there it is. You will need this pulley here to go right by your alternator. And again, just to emphasize why, look what it's, look what it's doing. Look at the wrap on your alternator. You got contact here to here. Now, if I had not used this, would it have worked? Yes, probably would have, because it'll come off the air compressor, it'll come on the alternator, and come down here and straight down to the crank. But here's what you'll end up having. You only have contact from about here to about right there. So under a situation where, say for instance, you're pulling with your winch, the winch pulls off the battery, yes, but the alternator's got to charge the battery. And the, when the alternator is in charge mode, especially if it's charging pretty hard, this pulley right here actually has quite a bit of resistance on it when it's charging. So, if you only got contact from here to there, and every time that alternator kicks in to charge your battery, it's going to squeal. So, adding this pulley right here in, created your wrap from here to there, and you got a lot of contact going on. You got probably close to half the pulley contact so that is highly highly recommended would it be 100 percent necessary no but definitely highly recommended you will definitely need another belt regardless because if you're short belting it like when you originally came off of this right here over to the alternator that ain't gonna fly because of course you you need the longer belt to accommodate the ac so you're gonna need another belt regardless so go ahead get your pulley do it right and again our pulley was 38042 and i got this at o'reilly's and I'll check out um, Amazon to see if it's on Amazon. If it is, I'll uh, drop the links down below so you guys can just order them, have all the parts you need, and not have to run anywhere. Okay, right now it's setting to zero and turn the air compressor on. Go here and watch this gauge. Alright my power addict crew, that's how you do the belt on your onboard compressor. Don't be skimping out. Make sure you get the right pulley, the right belt, and you get the proper performance out of your alternator and your air compressor. Also, your old belt. This one's in perfect shape. Be sure to keep this in your rib because you never know. You might need a spare belt if you're going down the road someplace, you're on a road trip or whatever, and you need to swap in your other belt. You'll always have a spare. Or you can always buy another belt this size right here and just do a simple swap out doing the alternator trick. So everyone, if you enjoyed this video, if you're enjoying this video series about onboard air, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me some cool comments down below. Tell me about what you do with your onboard air. Cool? Appreciate y'all. Peace. Later y'all.